This video will look at how changes to the target and the actual cash rates through monetary policy can actually affect interest rates in the market or interest rates of the entire economy. And we're going to use one market or how the cash rate can actually change one the interest rate of one market as a specific example of how this works. So we're going to look at the 90 day commercial bill market. Commercial bill market. So what we know so far is the RBA can conduct monetary policy through manipulating the supply of money or the monetary base in order to change the target cash rate or the actual cash rate in the uh, overnight money market. And the RBA could only affect the overnight money market, which, uh, which is a market of unsecured loans and securities, but it can't actually affect every single market. So that's again one of the weaknesses of monetary policy is that banks have no overriding incentive or uh, obligation to actually change their interest rates if the RBA changes its interest rates. Although the, the bank can now have scope to change their interest rates because they can still maintain that profit margin, they don't actually have the obligation to change interest rates. But we're going to look at how interest rates can in fact be changed in a whole range of different markets not because of oblig obligations or because of incentives but because of simple market or because of the simple market mechanism of supply and demand of bills so the overnight money market is a very short term money market and again the 90 day commercial bill market is a short term money market so 90 day commercial bills are just <laughs> Um, securities that have a maturity date of 90 days so what happens is that the borrower or the purchaser of that security must pay that person um, or the, the, the lender the money after 90 days so this is again a, um, a short-term money market and we can see how the the demand for bills in the overnight money market is very similar to the demand for bills in the 90 day commercial bill market. Okay, so this being the overnight money market. And as we know the cash rate or the interest rate on the overnight money market is also known as the actual cash rate. And the actual cash rate isn't necessarily the target cash rate because it fluctuates due to changing demand and supply. Okay, so now assuming that again the the x-axis being the monetary base, we are going to assume that the money supply is a constant, and for whatever reason the demand for the actual cash rate has increased from MD0 to MD1 so the actual cash rate has actually risen from I0 to I1 so what happens here is that the cost of borrowing in the overnight money market has actually increased because of, because of this increase in interest or market interest rates in the economy and this is set by the RBA by announcing an increased target cash rate. So what happens here is that because banks are also businesses, they also maximize they also want to maximize their profits. And by borrowing money at a high rate of interest, that actually cuts into their profits and therefore their profits will decline, so they're they're more likely to borrow uh, borrow money at a lower rate of interest. So with that in mind, we're going to look at the 90-day commercial bill market. And again, the y-axis is the interest paid on 90-day bills, and the x-axis is again the quantity 
of 90 day bills. The quantity price, interest being the price paid, and quantity being the quantity. And so the supply of bills, like every market, is upward sloping. So at a high price, firms would issue more bills, and that would result in a higher quantity supplied. And again, the demand curve would be down sloping because, as we know, let's redo that demand curve. As we know, at this low level interest paid, that means the quantity demanded of commercial bills would actually increase. So as a result, we can see that the quantity or the equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price of bills, we just got to call this Q1 and I P I zero. So the price of interest zero. So what happens here when the interest paid on the overnight money market actually increases due to this shift to the right of demand is that those trading the 90 day market bill would actually have less incentive to trade here and more incentive to trade in the overnight money market. So this is relative prices yet again. An increase in the relative price of the overnight money market has sent price signals to suppliers of 90 day bill markets because they're closely related to substitute products. If we're going to talk about this in a microeconomic sense, they're closely related to substitute products and therefore the supply of 90 day commercial bills would decrease. So we can see a shift to the left of 90 day commercial bills, so from S0 to S1. And this is because those who were previously lending in the 90 day bill market would then now try to lend in this overnight money market because of this higher level of actual interest rate. Now what this means again for demand is that because of this higher rate of interest in this overnight money market, because businesses wish to borrow at the lower rate of interest, that means the demand for 90 day bills has increased concurrently. So this decrease in supply from S0 to S1 acts simultaneously to this increase in demand. And as we can see, there is a new equilibrium price. And this new equilibrium price is at P holders P I one and now this would mean that the, although we don't know what happens to the equilibrium quantity traded depending on the relative magnitudes of the shifts in the supply and demand we can determine conclusively that the price or the interest paid on 90 day bills has actually increased and so what this means is that the change in the overnight the interest rate in the overnight money market has actually flowed into or spilled over into the the interest rate of the 90 day commercial bill market and so that's how a change in the overnight money market's cash rate can affect the interest rate of many other different markets so the 90 day bill the 60 day bill the 30 day bill bonds, securities, and all other different financial instruments. We can look at the opposite of contractionary monetary policy or expansionary monetary policy as having the same effect. So let's assume that the interest rate or the demand for money has decreased and therefore the interest rate has decreased. We can see that therefore the supply of bills in the 90 day market will increase due to this uh, relative decrease in price of 90 of overnight money market uh, securities. So what this means is that businesses will tend to supply more in the 90 day bill market and therefore because they wish to supply more uh, those who demand 90 day bills would then move to the overnight money market because of this low prevailing level of interest and demand will shift to the left and as a result we will see a decrease in the equilibrium price from here PI1 to PI0. So the analysis is very simple um, that a change in the overnight money market's actual cash rate 
where they spill over into all sorts of different financial markets. And that's how the RBA, by manipulating the cash rate in the overnight money market, can actually manipulate the cash rate or the interest rate in all sorts of different markets throughout the economy.